everybody be there and talk to them about the Lord. But is that enough? And then, and, then, and then all of a sudden, they turn their backs because they, they find it too hard. And they find that the person is trying to help you and just, you know, trying to make you to be better, a better person. So, um, we see that there's a lot of things going on in, in, the, in the city. A lot of people on addictions, drugs, alcohol. Um, you think the message of Jesus could could help help people like this? Well, in today's uh, times, I think it is the only way, the only answer. For the people that are keep on dying, the Lord died for us. You know, Jesus died for us. Jesus' fortune was so much greater than all You know, this is nothing. And it's an everyday struggle. And of course we can, being humans, we can fall from grace. But that's the reason Jesus came to this world to offer salvation. Uh, and hopefully none will reject it. You know what I mean? So, and, so in saying we have tasted of both worlds, lived another life, Jesus is a message that needs to be spread in this city. Um, you, you, you agree with us that there is a, a lot of addictions, a lot of teenage pregnancies. Oh, a yes. lot of, uh, oh, yes. a lot of, uh, you know, uh, problems in the homes, you know, spousal abuses, oh, yeah. adultery, uh, adultery uh, witchcraft, all witchcraft. kinds of things, and e e everything. But, but this is this is the this is my view on it. Look, I think we're all to blame for that because look. Well, what I believe is what the Bible says. Isaiah 52 declares, "Awake, awake, put on strength." put on the beautiful garments and I believe that we as a body of Christ need to awaken awaken from this slumber that we've been in for so long and go out into the world and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ people are dying committing suicide because they feel like there's no hope and it's our job and it's our duty as a body of Christ to awaken and declare to them that Jesus Christ still saves heals and delivers we have to wake up and go for it now is the time Mexico and they're coming to tell us all this story, all these not put you know the trafficking that they're killing people outright. Yeah. Outright. And and in my belief too, it's yeah. because that's gonna come over here. That is the evil, but Jesus Christ is the most powerful thing. And that's one thing I learned that he is the light, that he is the only way. And without him, without him, we, we you can become somebody but you will fall. For what what is it what is it to gain the whole world but to lose your own soul? Amen. You you know what I mean, brother? Amen, amen. So I, we want to share, you know, get your view on how important it is to get the message. Do you strongly believe that the churches have, have literally, have, have really done their job in this city? Really think about it. As we have been looking uh, at us, me being a pastor, I look at it now and I say, hey, you know what? I, I say, look, 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 all of us could do a lot. Try to save more people. More people to try to keep on going on the right road. So do y'all believe that the message of Jesus Christ Really, really, it's a spin. It's a spin. It's a spin. Do you all think that the churches are doing enough to spread the gospel? You need to go to the homes. You need to go to the homes because there's a lot of people that can't get out there. So that's where we're leaving. That's a good example right there. I'm going to tell you why. Because our church next year is going to go, it's going to launch. Uh, we're going to do a Bible studies in home. We're going to send out groups. Do you all think in your personal life, would that affect your life? Help me! I've changed. I've changed from a lot. Yeah, Yolanda, I've known her for years and years. I have, I, have, I have kids now, I have family. And I don't want to put my kids to work. You see that there is a need for evangelism in the city of Palcures. As we hear the testimony, we hear the cries of the people. We, we hear the petitions of the people for prayer. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that we are a, ho a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, chosen by God's own possession to proclaim God's excellencies to the world. In the Gospels, you read that Jesus commissioned us to go and make disciples of all nations. And we hear the testimonies and we see that people perish because of the lack of, lack of knowledge of God. Salvation. What is what is being saved? You know, you hear that a lot. I yeah, just yeah, got yeah. saved yesterday. Or I got saved the other day. I've been saved for a year. When you hear that, what does that mean to you? Saved. Well, saved? Uh, people think that they are saved, but I mean, saved from what? I mean, the people 
think that they are saved. Right. Nobody's saved. You die, you die like a dog, and you're going to, they're going to bury you or burn you, whatever it is. I mean, and the only way that uh, you can be saved is if they're going to hang you or if they're going to put you up on a wall and, and, and kill you and shoot you like Hacia Pancho Villa over there in those days. They're going to shoot you and somebody comes over here and say, hey, wait a minute. You know what? I need this guy. I'm going to use him. I'm going to save him. But other than that, people use those words to uh, make other people uh, think that they are saved because they went, they go to church or because they came over here and, uh, oh, hey, you were a drunk? Yeah. You were a drunk. You were a, a, a heroin addict. You were this and that. And and now Jesus saved me. Yeah. Jesus saved me. No, no, no. Nobody saved you. You saved your own self. Because you know what? I've been on drugs all my life. I've been on drugs and I've done every drug. You, you name it, I've done it. Right. And you know who saved my who saved me? Me myself. Because only you can do it. Nobody can save you. There's nobody. Can